for an FCS school to get the run of quarterbacks they had, start with Steve Walker. Walker pulls it down, fires in the end zone, touchdown! And then you have Brock Jensen, who left as the all-time wins leader in FCS history as a quarterback. Then a guy named Carson Wentz. Up the middle, it's Wentz at the 15, makes a tackle at the 10, at the 5, touchdown, Carson Wentz! And you're thinking, okay, Wentz is gone. Good run, it was a nice run of quarterbacks. And here comes Easton Stick. Well, he ends up becoming a draft pick of the Los Angeles Chargers. Easton Stick! Trey Lance, again, highly recruited kid but you really don't know how he's gonna pan out. And what does he do? He turns in the greatest season in the history of FCS football for a quarterback. Take off and run. Putting it back inside the tent. Lance! Into the end zone! Touchdown! No interceptions. Leads the team in rushing. Unbeaten season. Wins two major awards. It's gonna be hard to top that. But what was amazing is that so many other schools around here, some of the bigger programs, did not want him to be a quarterback. They recruited him to be a defensive player and he was North Dakota State's first commit. And look what it's led to. <laughs> this guy's been unbelievable. My name's Trey Lance. Uh, I'm quarterback at North Dakota State, uh, originally from Marshall, Minnesota. I wanted to be a quarterback. I knew I was a quarterback uh, from probably the time I stepped on the field for real uh, my sophomore year. I kind of knew that's what I wanted to do um, if I was going to play college football was, was be a quarterback. And I honestly took a little bit of offense to it when I was labeled an athlete, uh, whatever, you know, just because I was an athletic kid that, that could play quarterback. I think, I don't know if it's frustrating, but I definitely notice it. Uh, it's definitely something that I want to change, um, but I know it's never going to go away at the same time. I think it's too into the moment right now for a lot of people to understand exactly what they're seeing. Nobody really goes to a game and goes, I'm watching history. They go there because they want to watch their team win, have a good time, go tailgate. I never thought 33 would be broken in my lifetime. It's been remarkable to see in the same decade by the same program. North Dakota State football goes back decades. It was such a source of pride for the community, for the university. And as the program continued to evolve, they just continued to stack winning season on top of winning season. And no matter who the coach was, the machine just kept rolling all the way through the Division II days. In the 80s into the 90s, there was so much success that this foundation was laid. Then we transitioned into Division I. Craig Bull, um, you know, came on during that transition as the head coach, and he really built a foundation of winning. He, he knew how to do it at that level. You know, they talk about the Bison culture. Craig Bull really instilled that here. The thought of going to Division I was still a scare for a lot of people around here because they weren't sure, are we, are we really ready for this next step? You know that Bitmoji where everybody looks up in the sky? That exactly was what I think the reaction was. The program had some success early. Well, there, there, there's two things that happened. One was in 2003, as a Division II school, NDSU went out to the University of Montana. Grizzlies at the time were the benchmark for 1AA football. And we're all thinking, okay, this game's gonna go 49-7, 56-5, 6, or something like that. Snyder gets it up, and it is wide right. NDSU has just upset the Montana Grizzlies. 25-24, the Bison 
have done what very few have to the Montana Grizzlies. Come and that was sort of the, I would say, the jumping off point for the wave of enthusiasm for Division I athletics. And this is, I would think, another jumping off point when the Bison beat the University of Minnesota. Play action fake. Touchdown Bison! They sent Fashal in motion. Jangula out of Williston, North Dakota. And then all of a sudden you started to see people start to change the way I think the way they looked at themselves. Yeah. When people see games, see the excitement, and then their success on the national level, the whole state feels a part of it. And I think that's when Bison Nation grew into this massive unit that it is here today, when they had access to it and everyone felt a part of it. Tailgating is massive. So it's become an event more than a game. It's really been something to see how this community has just become so nuts and so gaga over this university and this athletic program. They draw people from around the region. So in a sense, your big time sporting event is Bison football. All the alumni became very prideful, and then all of the winning started, and it just wrapped into this big mass of people that we call Bison Nation today. It's fun to recruit kids who grow up wanting to be Bison and talking about when they were five and six years old coming to games and, and, and wearing the uniform and, and dreaming of being a Bison. That's a unique opportunity that, that I have as a head football coach. I want kids who, who want to be here and who want to be successful and get their degrees. Guys who've been captains, guys who play multiple sports, guys who uh, are in some sort of leadership role at their high school, in their church, in their community. And this program has figured it out on recruiting. I don't want to say mastered it because nobody ever masters recruiting, but pretty close. What they do is they, they, they take this, this mix of these tough kids from a lot of times smaller communities that they develop, they can throw some pounds on them. And then they'll bring in some speed guys from maybe Florida or Texas. I think one thing when they made the Division I move, everybody thought, okay, there's the end of any players from North Dakota ever playing at NDSU football. Almost the opposite is held true. I think they found these kids from the smallest of communities. Cordell Volson is from rural Belfort, North Dakota. It was kind of a dream come true to come here. You grow up watching them and just thinking these guys are, are superstars, you know, and North Dakota State is your, is your NFL team. You know, if Coach Hedberg wouldn't have came and knocked on the door, it's like, shoot, half the guys here would be back home farming or working or doing whatever, so it kind of just opens up a lot of doors. You get to see a, see a lot of cool places, you know. You, you do a lot of things you wouldn't have done otherwise. And so they find these guys who think nothing of getting up at 5 a.m., going working on the farm, go to school, go to practice, come home, get up at 5 a.m., do it over again. Anytime you, you talk about North Dakota State, you talk about the state of North Dakota, toughness needs to be an adjective that you use to describe us. They find these guys that just buy in and are almost trouble free. I don't care how fast you are, how quick you are, how great a hands you have, or how, what your coverage skills are, but if you're not a good character and you're not willing to take care of your classwork, NDSU's probably not the place for you. Jim Kramer, he's the strength coach and I think he's one of the best in the country and he's been the one constant through all the head coaches and he builds a relationship with the players I think that's uh, stronger than most strength coaches. He's almost a coach himself. That's it. You know, the, the MVP of this program is Jim Kramer. He came here in 2002, is still here. The players swear by him. He's around the players more than the coaches. He's the guy who's taken a lot of these kids who are so raw when they get here, just so raw physically, and just develops their, their lean muscle mass. He's just done such a great job and the, the players really respect him, so he's a big part of it. I write about it, so I think I have a pretty good idea on it. I wrote a book about it. It starts with culture, and nobody was more important in the rise of the dynasty than Jim Cramer. Okay, 
one person, all right, is not more important than another person. One person doesn't make this program, all right? This program is about people. People make the program, not one person. That's my reaction. The emphasis that he puts on the details, how hard he is on us, um, you know, he really treats everyone the same, regardless of if you're uh, a four-year starter or if you're, it's your first day on campus. Uh, I think just the, the culture that he, you know, it's in his blood, it really is. The person who's going to have the most interaction with our players over the course of the year is going to be the strength and conditioning coach. So he has to be the very best as far as physical development and mental development, and, and we have it. As a strength and conditioning coach, you want to kind of be a reflection of the head coach and what he emphasizes in practice or at practice that day needs to be emphasized in the weight room. Everybody needs to be on the same page. Just having our players learn how to finish, whether it's finishing a drill, finishing the game, finishing the season, finishing the academic year, we even talk about it now. Things like that, and instilling that into the strength and conditioning program that is what we're trying to do with the football program. Those are the biggest things that, that we remember as players. Uh, just that they're looking out for us, uh, you know, on or off the field, but at the same time they're going to push us, you know, and get everything they, everything they can out of us. And Lance takes the snap, no rolling. There's something about the way this team prepares for games, how hard they practice. It's nothing I've seen or experienced in a lot of other places. And when you have that type of buy-in, great things happen, and we've seen that. Here's the thing about NDSU, though. I would not underestimate them. And I think a lot of these FPS programs do simply because of geography. You're in Fargo, North Dakota. A lot of people in the country don't even know where that's at. It's closer to Canada than anything else. I mean, we're up here, fellas. We're, we, we are, we're damn near near the Arctic Circle. When you go to school up here, it's cold. I mean, it is brutal. Sometimes in the winter, you get those Alberta clippers, it just takes your breath away. And I don't know if that develops some sort of bond with people at this university like, yeah, I graduated from NDSU and I survived it too because you can die walking to class if you're not dressed right. It is an FCS school and it always will be just because of geography. But there's a lot of FBS qualities about this program, the support, the players are treated well, the fans treat the players well, the players are good to the community, they, they volunteer. They're nine and three against FBS. I mean, they match up pretty well against these programs because they're physical enough. They can, they can handle the trenches. There's a lot of FBS schools who, a lot of FBS schools who will not return the 701 area code number. They will not play them. No way. I wasn't sure they could win at Kansas State. I wasn't sure they could win at Minnesota. I certainly wasn't sure they could win at Iowa. But every time that there's some sort of doubt, this team just continues to say no. We can compete with anybody. FCS football has gotten really good. It's competitive, it's hard-nosed, it's tough. It's become a really good level of football. And I hope people start to pay attention to it more because I really feel like the level's only going to get better and better and better. It's on par with a lot of the G5 schools out there. I know a lot of people that just have no idea really what FCS football is all about. And they see the label FCS and they just, you know, assume it's similar to Division II football. And I think we compete with a lot of FBS teams that a lot of people don't, don't think that we can. When the success started to follow with some of the FBS wins, all of a sudden people said, wow, this North Dakota State program is pretty legit. And it just continued to build and grow and grow into this dynasty now that we've experienced over the last decade. We went on this run starting in 2011 that hasn't stopped right now, eight of nine titles. It's our job to, to cover this team for better or for worse, and 
It's a lot better than worse, that's for sure. You know, it was just a, a, a unique situation. School located uh, as far north as, as NDSU is, did an outstanding job. You always saw them in Minneapolis, uh, getting the best players throughout the Midwest. I think as a whole team, everyone just helped each other along and that was a huge part of our success. It helps you have a good quarterback. <laughs> I know we're not an NFL caliber football team, but we play like them. Uh, we mimic them schematically, and I think that's critical when we do recruit quarterbacks. I think those young men come here and are able to handle the, the verbiage that goes with play calling, uh, the, the in-game adjustments. Uh, Randy Hedberg, quarterback coach, NDSU. I played college football, and then I got drafted in the National Football League. I got drafted by Tampa out of uh, college and played a couple years with them, and then uh, a short time with the Oakland Raiders. Our offense is a pro style type offense and our quarterbacks, you know, get into a mentality of playing under center and a little bit out of the gun and I think they get some good uh, background in, in the pro game a little bit from our system and I think it prepares them well to go to the next level. But obviously you got to have players that have some talent and that want to learn and have the intelligence level to do that and process at the line of scrimmage. So, and I think we've been very fortunate to have that over the last few years. North Dakota State's offensive system is extremely complex. There are a lot of different things that you have to understand and know how to do when you're under center. You're making the calls. You're putting guys in motion. The play that's getting run is what you see on the field on how defense is aligned. They put a lot on these guys mentally not just physically, but mentally on how to run an offense. And it's such a huge challenge. It's not about throwing the ball 50 times a game. It's about playing good football and winning ball games that get you opportunities at the next level. It goes way back. Uh, there's been a lot of great players. Uh, you know, I think in the Division II era, uh, there was a lot of winning. Uh, that really set the foundation. Then the transition to Division I uh, in the Great West Conference, uh, I think really built the, the foundation for the talent level that had to move up to Division I. Steve Walker came in at quarterback and really set the stage there in that era. Steve Walker, who was the, the guy who beat Ball State. He was a Division II quarterback recruit who had Division I accuracy for an arm. Brock Jensen came in in 2010 right in that spot. You know, we were kind of struggling at the quarterback position a little bit uh, right then, and Brock Jensen came in and stabilized it, and he did it with uh, leadership and toughness. The quarterback position at NDSU, it's not just a drop back passer. They have to run the ball. They have to know the system very well. So Brock started that, and then the winning started. and then you enter Carson Wentz, you know, I think we all knew he was gonna be great. He waited three years before he even played. To the right, bra, the wide man, shotgun snap. You know, had a really good arm. The stature, he had a big kid, you know, 6'5", could really run. When he started playing, he really elevated everything. Then you go to Easton Stick. You know, he was a different kind of quarterback, more of a running quarterback, but he developed into a great passer because of Randy Hedberg. quarterbacks are just hard-nosed, tough competitors that just refuse to lose. They're guys that would run through brick walls if they had to to win a game. Yeah, you're not going to be one of those quarterbacks that throws the ball 30, 35, 40 times a game. We may only throw it 18 times. 
but we still need you to run this offense. We still need you to pick up big third downs. We still need you to understand that you're still an integral part of this system. Every single one of those guys understood that. That group of guys just took this program to another level, had to start from somewhere. And for a Division I FCS program to really bring in that many in a row is, is beyond belief, really. Steve Walker, Brock Jensen, Carson Wentz, Easton Stick. This is probably your next guy here. Whenever Randy Hedberg tells us this kid is special, we, we know it's the truth because the proof is there. He has identified talent, developed talent, and when Randy said this kid is special, we all kind of knew at that point. Well, well, Trey attended our, our summer camp uh, between his sophomore and junior years, and then again after his junior season. You notice the athleticism right away and the size, and he had the ability to throw the football uh, across the field. Those are things I saw with him. And then, then I watched him play basketball in the, in, you know, during his senior season, and I saw the competitiveness that he had and, and all, and um, I think that was the thing that stood out to me the most. First time I saw Trey Lance was when he came in as a true freshman late in the game, and I think he took like a quarterback run up the middle. Lance maybe changing the play, takes a snap, Lance will throw it, steps up, now he'll run. There goes and just sprinted by guys like they were just standing there. And then later in the season, I think he got in on a second game as a true freshman in that four game rule. Fumbled the snap, picked it up, and scored. Game number two, he's out here now. He fumbles oh. the snap. He'll run it up the middle. Oh. Now he's going to bust it to the outside. Are you kidding me? Try it in there, Trey Lance. Touchdown! And I think we figured that out, and it only took two plays. That this guy, it was something pretty special. But what was amazing is that so many other schools around here, some of the bigger programs, did not want him to be a quarterback. They recruited him to be a defensive player. We don't, we don't think you can be a quarterback at our level, but we think you can still help us at our level. Where North Dakota State is like, hey, you come here, you be our quarterback. We believe you can be a quarterback and excel at that position. And you saw it even in his redshirt freshman year. And he's short, or did he stay on his feet? Touchdown, wow! I always felt on the inside like I'm a quarterback since I started playing it. And I honestly took a little bit of offense to it when I was labeled an athlete, uh, whatever, you know, just because I was an athletic kid that, that could play quarterback. You know, it's still to this day, I think that people get it mixed up, uh, you know, whether that I can't throw the ball, little things like that. I don't know if it's frustrating, but I definitely notice it. Uh, it's definitely something that I want to change, um, but I know it's never going to go away at the same time. Well, I didn't know what other schools were reaching out to him in, uh, in regard to a position. I knew I liked what I saw when I watched him throw in person at our camp and then when I went down and saw him throw in the spring uh, prior to his senior year and also I, it was pretty evident to me we were going to recruit him as a quarterback. Uh, there's no place I'd rather be looking back at it now. Uh, obviously at the time I might have been frustrated uh, with a couple of schools that didn't think I would be you know a good fit for their program. You know when it really came down to it I don't think that playing in bowl games was, was something that I wanted to do. Uh, I wanted the expectation to be playing for a national championship, you know, winning conference championships. Um, you know, that's the expectation here, nothing's changed. So I'm really thankful for where I am and the decision I made. Oh, man. The, the first time that I saw him throw the ball deep, it was at Target Field. It was his first touchdown pass to Phoenix Sproles. He threw this ball over the top in a deep ball, and it looked effortless. The first drive to the game, Lance goes back to pass, Phoenix Sproles running a fly down the left side, and Trey just threw this most perfect, high arcing pass. Uh, Phoenix made an unbelievable over the shoulder catch, but it was put where only Phoenix was going to catch it. I actually don't know how to explain it. It's just really cool how um, he just takes his time, knows where guys are going to be on defense, and for us, that's really big on offense because that's how teams win and lose games is turnovers and when you have a quarterback that doesn't throw a single interception all year you're going to be in good shape so whatever he's doing keep it up because <laughs> it's working. The play to me where you really saw him shine and you saw his toughness and just how special he was 
was against UC Davis on a touchdown run. He tucked it and ran, and this UC Davis defender came up, a very good tackler. And Trey lowered his shoulder, boom. Trey just demolished the cornerback and ran through him like he was nothing. And I turned to the guy next to me, I was calling the game with him. We just kind of gave each other this look like, wow, this kid's a redshirt freshman. The other play uh, was the deep ball to Christian Watson in the Youngstown State game at Youngstown. It was a cold night, it was a miserable night, and he threw this deep ball that was just a perfect spiral. And Christian Watson right in stride, it was a big long touchdown pass. Running over a guy in the run game, it's just the whole package that he has. All right, there's another example. Here we go, here's another quarterback that NDSU has found. Even the other quarterbacks, when they were younger, I think he's more advanced. Uh, as a freshman than they were as far as the preparation and the mental side of it. I guess the best thing I could say was I'm at the right place at the right time, you know, because I've had good players and no question about it, we recruited well and I, when I say that it's not my quarterback, it's our quarterback and, and they're very proud of that. My name is Angie Lance. I have a husband Carlton and two sons Trey and Bryce. We live in Marshall, Minnesota. The nearest city is about 90 miles, and that'd be Sioux Falls. Our community is extremely supportive. Specifically, when you talk about football, our varsity team gets to play out at the college facility, at SMSU's facility. They have a beautiful turf field, beautiful stadium, um, great place to have the opportunity to play. It's a place where people gather in the fall. I don't know if I realized that Trey was going to be as successful as he has been. We are very realistic with the kids and so Trey was a freshman in high school and we had overheard him telling people that he would like to play a Division I sport someday. And I may not have played a lot of sports, but I've been around to sports my whole life. I really try to be supportive and, and only talk about the positives, but when I heard this, I really felt like it was our job as parents to sit down and talk with him about that goal and and have a kind of a reality check. Because if it's a goal tray, there is going to be hard work to be done and a price to pay and a lot of sacrifices to make and it, it starts now. As a dad, I wasn't comfortable at the time, you know, the injury things and stuff like that, concussions and stuff, you know, it was kind of a, a holistic approach of, of looking at, you know, hey, you don't know, you know, maybe baseball or, or you don't know these other sports. We just kind of role played like in three years from now when you're a junior, that's when you're going to be starting to see people your age getting these phone calls where they're being offered a Division One scholarship. You know, how are you going to feel if that's not you? And if you're, if that's, if it's not you and you're okay with that, that's your dream, not mine. I know you're going to be successful with whatever you choose to do. Uh, so I'd say the biggest thing that my parents emphasized was just uh, what my goals were, you know, I had to write them down, things like that. Um, and then also, you know, as far as achieving those goals, you know, they made sure I was doing what was necessary, you know, not kind of just going through the motions at practice, things like that. You know, people don't reach their goals by just doing the bare minimum. Compete, 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 compete. You have to have that, that mindset in there uh, all the time. And I think that's what, um, you know, the biggest thing that I've tried to instill in, in both my boys. Yeah, my dad played football at, at Southwest Minnesota State back home uh, in Marshall, Minnesota. Got invited to the NFL Combine, uh, played with the Houston Oilers at the time for a year, uh, and then played with the Saskatchewan Rough Riders in the CFL and then with the London Monarchs um, in the World League. Uh, and he actually played corner, which is a very different mindset than quarterback, so it was very different for me. My dad was probably the biggest influence on me football-wise uh, and just competitiveness. My impact on Trey is, as far as, you know, coming from a defensive standpoint is that I, he knows what I would look for. So as a quarterback, Trey understands that, you know, what, what a defensive back stance means. What kind of leverage does he have? Does he have inside leverage? You know, is there, is there any tells that he gives? Um, taking care of the ball, you know, is this guy a heavy hitter or is he fake tough? You know, there are certain guys that 
you know, how to set a guy up, even when you're running the ball. Uh, if you're running the ball, you give him this, you make him come to ground zero. Now you can, now you can, you know, blow him up. As a family, we're definitely a competition family. So me and Trey have definitely had those typical brother backyard fights, those brawls coming from my dad as a defensive back and me and my brother as a receiver and quarter, quarterback. I think it all kind of works out perfectly as a perfect kind of blend because we're all teaching each other different things and we're all learning from each other. So it all kind of benefits all of us. They are super competitive. They, they both like to win and neither of them will take it easy on the other, no matter the circumstance. But they also are very good brothers when it doesn't come to competing against each other. Yeah, you know, Trey and Bryce, um, unfortunately, we're all, I, I tell them all the time and I get mad at them. I said, if you guys weren't just like me, I would be just irate all the time. <laughs> but they're, I mean, I, we, we're just, we're just, uh, it's hard for us all to play games together because it is, it is very competitive. Yeah, me and my brother are still, I mean, he's probably one of the toughest competitors uh, to this day that I know. I'll never admit that I'll lose to him anything, but he's, he's he's starting to grow up a little bit, so he's, he's starting to catch me. I'll, I'll give him that. Uh, but, you know, we're really close. Uh, I think, you know, we talk every single day, um, whether it's just about a game or practice or just, you know, how it's going. See FaceTimes with me during school. I have to tell him sometimes I'm in class, Trey, I can't FaceTime you at all times. He gets someone kind of mad at me sometimes for that, but just hard being away from him for so long at times, but yeah. He was a dynamic quarterback in high school. The film doesn't lie. If you looked at the film, there is no if, ands, or buts. Could he play safety? Absolutely. Uh, but at safety, I told him, I said, your skill, your skill set at safety is above average. Your skill set at quarterback is five star, is excellent. Uh, I'm Terry Ballman. I'm the head football coach at Marshall High School about 800 to 850 students, and we're class 4A in Minnesota. We've been undefeated at home since 2014. Uh, we share a field with Southwest Minnesota State Division II school in town, so uh, a very strong football score. Kids love to play football. They're passionate about what they do, and they look forward to it all the time. Uh, we let our players go whatever position they wanted, and Trey came up to me and said he, he wanted to try quarterback a little bit. And I'm like, okay, he's probably going to be a running back for us. And, and then as we saw him play quarterback, of course, you know, the skills obviously came to the top. And, and then his leadership was fantastic, even as a, an eighth grader. And, and I remember coming home and, and my wife asked me uh, on what he's going to be like. I said, Trey's going to be a special player. I didn't know at the time he's going to be a quarterback for us, but, but we knew he was going to be a special player. Uh, then ninth grade, he played his freshman year and, and, and shared the quarterback spot. And then uh, as a sophomore, Trey was, was our JV person there and, and uh, came out and, and uh, did a great job running our JV. And then our varsity senior quarterback got uh, hurt week eight. And we were trailing in the game and Trey actually came in and led us to two touchdowns. He was just doing so good. He was throwing these passes. I was like, I didn't know he could do that. That was kind of the point where I was like, okay, like he's going to be something special for sure. Trey took over as starting quarterback, uh, took us through the tournaments and led us to state the next three years. I didn't know if college football would be an option for me. Well, you know, I wasn't playing my, my sophomore year. I was thinking, man, I got two more years. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm praying that this is going to be my opportunity. Um, and then obviously that came. Uh, went 3-0 in playoffs, made it to the state tournament. Um, I think that was kind of when, you know, maybe recruiting was, you know, seemed realistic for me. I, I had a heart to heart with him and said, hey, you need to know your worth. You need to know who you are. You already got the height, you're 6'3", you're 210 pounds. You can project out 6'5", 225, but you have to understand what you, what you want to be. And I think from that night on, he was like, yeah, I'm, I'm quarterback and, and that's it. And so that kind of cleared up our picture of who actually was uh, going to recruit him and, um, you know, uh, kind of clear up his picture from there. When the recruiting process started and he started to have some of the offers, I I thought it was fantastic and exciting. For me, it was all about how I felt when we were in that one-on-one -on -one meeting with the coaches. And we had an opportunity to do quite a few of those. We had some, some offers. Um, NDSU's the one that stuck out the most and I, I think actually recruited him for quarterback without any issue. Uh, that's what they wanted him for. The other schools, 
um, uh, said, yeah, we want you to come here, we want you to throw, but we also want you to backpedal. Well, when the other schools came in and, and talked to Trey about being a linebacker, defensive back, we, we knew it was something we, we didn't want to do. We didn't want to go that direction, so we were focusing on quarterback. And, uh, you know, NDSU had a, a great offer there. When recruits come on campus and I get an opportunity to sit down with them, and if they're one of those young men that we decide to offer, I of, often talk about the bison effect that's about to happen meaning the minute they walk off the campus and, and they make it public that they've received an offer from NDSU, don't be surprised if FBS, Power Five, other FCS schools make an offer and you may not know exactly who this team is or, or who the coach on the other end is. There were some other FBS schools that were putting the full court press on him very late in the recruiting process before he signed in December. And fortunately, North Dakota State was able to hang on to him. I think the thing that separates us and, and we'll continue to do an unbelievable job is the relationship building that we try to create in our recruiting. Um, we're recruiting families. We're recruiting young men that understand that this is going to be a huge part of who they end up being down the road. They do a great job recruiting. They, they look at all of our kids and, and uh, uh, they give us an honest evaluation and, and that's what we're looking at as high school coaches and I think the work habits they've developed and, and sustained over the years is what keeps them on top. And, and I might not have understood all the words, the kind of offense they run or, you know, what, what, how they'll use him, but what I did know is that they told Trey why they wanted him, not why he should want them. Being here at North Dakota State, uh, being able to come and meet guys like Easton Stick, being able to learn from him for a year and then have that opportunity to compete as a redshirt freshman for the starting spot was probably the biggest thing that, uh, that attracted me here. I kind of got to shadow Easton for the rest of the year, which is a huge blessing for me. Uh, just being able to really just literally copy everything he does. Uh, whenever he was down here and I didn't have class, I was down here with him. Uh, the maturity that he had and the experience obviously was, was incredible. Uh, winning 49 games doesn't just happen. You know, it'd be easy to say, you know, we don't want this next guy to be as successful as I was, but it hasn't been that way. Every quarterback that's left has tried to prepare the next guy to take over and be ready to lead the program, to lead the offense, to be the guy that can continue this tremendous run. And it's worked out that way so well that mentorship has been a big part of why all these quarterbacks have had so much success. Had we written a story or written a script for the season, we never could have written, dared. We never would have dared write how it turned out. You know, we knew there was gonna be a lot of differences from the year before. New coach, new quarterback, Eason, FCS leader in wins. We're gonna replace him with a freshman quarterback. What's, what's that gonna be like? Personally in college, I wanted to have a shot at a national championship. Uh, and I think the playoff system is great for that, for teams that you know, maybe people don't think have a chance, people don't think are good enough. You know, they, they really get that opportunity uh, rather than just you know, playing in bowl game. But FCS football is good football. Uh, and anyone that says otherwise should check us out on Saturdays. Nickel State, I, it was my touchdown, but I got to credit Trey on this one. It was a, a sweep, jet sweep, and Trey was actually my lead blocker, and he, it was actually a, a key block for me. Um, the, I believe he was a linebacker. Trey blocked him, threw his head in him a little bit, uh, got, got just enough of him for me to run down 50 yards of scores. Montana State, uh, playoff game. His throw to Christian Watson, Trey made a great read, saw the, how the safeties were playing, threw it deep to Christian. Christian caught it and outran everyone for a touchdown. And uh, that was just his pocket presence. He was just sitting in the pocket, read the safety, saw the safety was down, threw it over his head, touchdown. So he can trust people, he can block, he can throw in the pocket. Um, what else is, oh, speed, I guess he can, he can run a little bit. Our offense was a, kind of stagnant in the second half of the national championship game. And Trey, we, we ran a pass play. Trey drops back, blocking, look up. Trey's got the first down. 
pretty soon he's in the end zone. I think a lot of people sampled FCS football in, the, in Frisco this year, and Trey was fantastic. But as far as the no interceptions, I think it's like a, a perfect game in baseball. It, it's probably even more impressive than that. There's been a, around 20 of those in the history of baseball. I don't recall ever seeing a quarterback uh, not have an interception all year. His ability to just know, okay, when, here's where we get greedy, here's where we don't get greedy that's what separates him from so many other freshmen. And I think ultimately that's why he had so much success not turning the football over. He read the right things almost every time and he didn't try to force things. And that's very uncommon for a young quarterback to make those decisions. In 2019, Trey won the Jerry Rice Award, which is the freshman of the year for the FCS. That award uh, just really uh, resonated with me, you know, personally, just because of the, you know, Jerry Rice, of who he was, and, you know, especially my generation, you know, to have his name, you know, attached to that award was uh, just phenomenal. He also won the Walter Payton Award, uh, which is the best offensive player in the FCS. As a freshman, Nobody has ever accomplished what he's accomplished at this level of football. It's never happened before. They've never had a Walter Payton Award winner as a quarterback, as a freshman in FCS before. We're excited and happy for Trey. I won't say I'm surprised by his success. You know, maybe the 28 touchdowns, zero interceptions is an amazing stat, but, but uh, we knew he was going to be successful. He's just driven as a person and as an athlete, and, and his character always comes to the top. He respects the, the heck out of us, and we respect the heck out of him. So He's a special talent. I think more importantly than that, he's a really awesome human being, too. He's been a great kid to get to know. What do you do now to get this guy better? His team goes 16-0. and He doesn't throw an interception. What are you going to do next year, Trey? There's a, a lot of expectations. I think Trey can handle it. Uh, I'm not sure I can. I think it's every kid's dream that's playing, you know, college football, uh, especially at the Division One level, to, to play in the NFL one day. being able to just know that we didn't let those guys down that played before us. Uh, you know, we wanted to play to impress those guys, honestly. All of them were winners. Every single one of these kids they brought in had so many of the, the integral parts of leadership away from the field. They understood what it took to get the rest of their teammates to follow them. They, they've had great friends. They've had great experiences. They got an education. And I haven't even talked yet about winning football games. He's been talking about this his whole life. He's always wanted to play specifically college football. I'm just to see him playing at this level and keeping the NDSU tradition going and definitely not disappointing is something I'm so proud of. Fifteen years down the line, twenty years down the line, you look back and go, Wow, that was pretty good, wasn't it? That was pretty good.